Peace be with you. The gospel reading of today, which is from Matthew chapter 10, 37 to 42, demands a very big sacrifice from us. In that very passage, our blessed Lord challenges us. Anyone who prefers father or mother, son or daughter is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone who cares for his own life will certainly lose it. And finally, the challenge of Christian hospitality. The only way for us to accept and assimilate this strong teaching into our lives is for us to go back to the second reading, which is in Romans 6, verse 3 to 4 and verse 8 to 11, and use it as a foundation. It tells us that by the virtue of our baptism, we have all been baptized into Christ's death and buried with him. And therefore, we all raise with him into the newness of life such that we no longer live our life, but the life of Christ. Against this backdrop, therefore, we can now explain the demands of today's gospel. With regard to the first, which is the preference of family ties, I will give you an instance of what it is not. I know of a woman who once told his husband to choose between her and his mother. She really wanted him to severe all ties to his mother in order to prove his love for her. That is very far from Jesus' teaching. Rather, Jesus tells us, in matters of conflicts of interest, we should not allow that which is dear to us to compel us to alienate ourselves from God. This, therefore, brings us to the second demand, which is taking up our cross and following Christ. Remember, Christianity is a religion of the cross. The third demand says, anyone who cares for his or her life will lose it. Let me give you another instance to prove this. One woman three weeks ago once told me that the comfort of her life is more precious than anything I would say about the indissolubility of marriage. This woman had quarrel with her husband and packed away from his home. Such a woman therefore preferred her comfort to the cross of Christian marriage. On another occasion, a Catholic architect was once challenged to lose his faith in order to become a Muslim if he must win a contract to construct a mosque. That man fed and submitted to becoming a Muslim. Such a man preferred wealth to the treasure of his soul. One thing interestingly significant about life is that you can get all this, but you can never be a happy man. Epictetus once says of Socrates that dying he was saved because he did not flee even when he had the opportunity to escape death. If he had escaped death, the real Socrates would have died. But because he sustained his truth, today we can talk about Socrates. Now, the final demand is the challenge of Christian hospitality. This demand presents something very lovely to every simple and humble soul, and that is, that we cannot all be prophets to proclaim and preach God's message, but to everyone who offers the simple gift of hospitality to the prophet, he or she will receive the same reward as the prophet himself. Now, let me use my immediate past experience to buttress this. Two weeks ago, I buried my father, and last Sunday, while appreciating God's people, I made a promise saying, since you have demonstrated that you are all I have, I will also continue to exercise my pastoral duties to you as all that I possess. Not that if they had shown less concern, I will resign from my ministry. No, rather, their show of concern and care encouraged me to set my efforts on top gear. The summary therefore is, when true greatness will be measured in the sight of God, it will be seen again and again that the men who move the world were entirely dependent on some persons who remained unknown to the world. Such hidden responsibility of God's people are God's greatest task. For without them, the prophets may not have been working zealously. Now, where do you belong? Are you one of the prophets? or the source of the prophet's zealousness. Let our interest be towards God's glory 
and a proclamation of his gospel, no matter how simple it could be. God bless.